O G I. This is the story of a man who thought he could make the world a better place. This story begins in 2013. North Korea had just run the third test of its nukes. While many were speculating about the possibility that World War III had just begun, NBA Hall of Famer Dennis Rodman was visiting North Korea. This came about after the North Koreans called the front office of the Chicago Bulls. Kim Jong-un is a huge fan of the team, so they asked if Michael Jordan would come visit the country. Michael said no. Then they contacted Scottie Pippen, who also said no. But Dennis Rodman, he said yes. And the rest was history. He knew nothing about North Korea before going there. I knew nothing about North Korea. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> That's nothing. He thought he was in for just another autograph signing event. Instead, he met the supreme leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un. Dennis had no idea who the man was at first. Who was the leader? I don't know, right? I've never seen the guy. So he was surprised when Kim walked into the basketball auditorium and the crowd went absolutely apeshit. To Rodman, the chanting crowd was an indication that Kim was a great and beloved leader. Little did he know that the pre-planted crowd were clapping out of self-preservation and fear. But Dennis was none the wiser. And I've never seen nothing like that in my life. You know, I've never seen 20,000 people get so emotional. And I was just wondering, why, would they, why are they doing that? I mean, people right here, like they're clapping, crying. I'm like, wow. Well, why are they doing that? I had no clue. So next thing you know, the interpreter said, you know who you're sitting by? I said, nope. He said, this is our supreme leader. Photographs of the two men sitting courtside together circulated. The New York Times called these images, quote, some of the strangest sights in the history of accidental American diplomacy. To onlookers, it seemed to be a sports exchange, similar to the ping pong diplomacy which led to the opening of China in the 1970s. But the US State Department denounced Rodman's visit as just a private trip by a private individual. Afterwards, Dennis Rodman went on a campaign to let the world know just how much he loved Kim. He's my friend first. He's my friend. I don't, I don't the world. He's my, he's my friend. I love him. He's my friend for life. I don't care what you guys think about him. I don't care what people around the world think about him. I basically hang out with him all the time. He, we laugh, we sing karaoke. We do a lot of cool things together. And we ride horses, we hang out, we go skiing. He has to do his job, but he's a very good guy. When asked about Kim Jong-un's crimes against humanity, Rodman simply contended that he didn't see it. Like all foreigners who visit North Korea, Rodman was taken on a propaganda tour. Although most see through it as a charade, Dennis, well, he took it at face value. And Kim Jong-un, you said, is a friend for life. Right. But he's a dictator who has, has suppressed other people, who has, who has taken away some basic human rights. But you, you think everyone there is actually happy. Yeah, I think because you know, people, people don't see the, the good side about that country. There was an immediate backlash, but he did have some supporters. Donald Trump praised his visit as a smart move. Before his second visit to North Korea in August of 2013, Dennis told the Miami Herald that he was going there just to hang out and have some fun. But pressure mounted. People wanted him to ask his buddy, Kim, for the release of Americans being detained in the country's notorious labor camps. After reading an opinion piece titled, Dennis Rodman should ask pal Kim Jong-un to release Kenneth Bay, he tweeted, okay. He followed this up with, I'm calling the supreme leader of North Korea, or as I call him, Kim, to do me a solid and cut Kenneth Bay loose. On January 6, 2014, Dennis returned to Pyongyang, bringing along 12 ex-NBA players for an exhibition game that was to be held on the 8th, which happened to be Kim Jong-un's birthday. Now, chances are you've seen this video before. For the first five minutes of it, former NBA player Charles Smith tries to calmly articulate their reasons for visiting North Korea. But then Dennis jumps in and drunkenly derails the whole thing, tapping into what seems to be his persona from his WWE days. Ah, I got it, I got it. Let me, let me do this. Really, really, I'm gonna tell you one thing. People around the world, around the world, I'm gonna do one thing. You guy behind the mic right now, we are the guys here doing one thing. When asked about Kenneth Bay, Dennis's tone became accusatory. Kenneth Bay did one thing. If you understand, I got it, I got it. If you understand what Kenneth Bay did, yeah. 
Do you understand what he did? What did he do? You in tell this me. Country. You tell me. What did he do? And, and no, 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 no. You tell me. Although he repeatedly asks. If you understand what Kid and Bay did. He leaves out any sort of conclusion. The answer is Kenneth Bay, who visited the country as a Christian missionary, was arrested and sentenced to 15 years in a labor camp for disseminating religious texts. Anyway, back to the interview. Charles Smith tries his best to take back control of the situation, but fails to rein Rodman in, who just starts going off. I'm just saying, no, I don't give a what the, I don't give a rat's ass what the hell you think. By the way, check out this guy's face here. Yeah, this guy right here. The one who looks like he's ready to leap out of his seat and kick Dennis in the throat. He ended up going on CNN saying that he regretted his trip to North Korea, which isn't very surprising if you just, I mean, pay attention to how he's looking throughout this whole interview. Anyway, a day after that interview, a video of Dennis Rodman singing to the Supreme Leader circulated, which caused an outcry. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. He was called an idiot by John McCain. Kenneth Bay's family said they were appalled. And he was called a traitor by Mike Tyson. Rodman later apologized, saying he was drunk, and he checked into a rehab program once back in the States. Kenneth Bay was returned to the US by November of that year, and he credited Dennis for his early release, stating that Rodman's rant raised awareness for his case, and that he wanted to personally thank him for his expedited release. Three years later, Dennis returned to Pyongyang. This was after a series of North Korean missile tests, which tightened UN sanctions. He told press that he was on a mission to open doors and claimed that Donald Trump, who he supported during the 2016 presidential election, would be pleased with his mission. Just trying to open the door. Just open the door, that's it. His visit happened to be on the same day of the release of an American citizen named Otto Warmbier, who was imprisoned in a North Korean labor camp after stealing a propaganda poster and who died under mysterious circumstances after being sent back to the United States. During an interview, Dennis Rodman's manager said he knew that his client was the reason Otto Warmbier was released. The same day that you go in, he's released, do you look at that and think, maybe we're being used here? Maybe we're a distraction from that? You know, I have, but there's no doubt in my mind that these trips and me asking on his behalf was the, had a lot to do with it. His claims were later denied by the State Department, as well as by Warmbier's father. Rodman tried to return to North Korea for his sixth visit, but he implied U.S. officials had discouraged him from doing so amid continuing tensions between the countries. Of course, he didn't put it so eloquently. His quote was, basically, they said it's not a good time right now. He tried to publicly ask Trump for a formal role as an envoy to North Korea, but the president didn't comment. In October of 2018, Rodman visited Singapore for Trump's North Korea summit. Although he wasn't invited or there on any official capacity, he said that he was there to give whatever support is needed to his friends, Trump and Kim. He appeared on CNN wearing a mega cap and his heart on his sleeve. At one moment, he burst into tears as he recalled the backlash he received due to his continued visits to North Korea. When I said those damn things, when I went back home, I got so many death threats. I got so many death threats when I was sitting there protecting everything. And I believed in North Korea. And when I went home, I couldn't even go home. I couldn't even go home. I had to hide out for 30 days. I couldn't even go home. And today is a great day for everybody. Singapore, Tokyo, China, everything. It's a great day. It is a great I'm day. Here to this see is it. a historic day. I'm so happy. The meeting between the two countries was something that he'd been anticipating for years. And to finally see it happen overwhelmed him. Regardless of how much he actually contributed to starting a dialogue between the two countries, there's no doubt in my mind that he believed that he was changing the world and making a difference, and that his efforts were fueled by an earnest conviction, as well as naivety, optimism, and big-hearted simplicity. However foolish and misguided, you gotta respect the man's passion. 